Have you ever felt bored of your D&D character? Perhaps the problem isn't that your character isn't good enough to be interesting. Most likely it's because your character is too good. In fact, it's more interesting to be kind of crappy. This past weekend I went to SkullCon, a small convention specifically for the Paizo RPG systems, Pathfinder, and Starfinder. I had to play a lot of games with a lot of people. What I realized is the characters that were the most interesting at the table, the ones that were the most remembered and talked about, well they were all characters that kinda sucked. This is why you should play characters that are terrible. When we sit down to come up with ideas for our character, we often want to fulfill the Superman fantasy. We want our characters to be the best at everything, to do the most damage, to pass the most diplomacy checks, and to always be the first in initiative. What I saw overwhelmingly at the convention was just that. Hundreds of characters with maximum damage output, a slew of skills, and solid saving throw modifiers. Now this is fine, but is it actually memorable? The thing is to tell a story with your character it needs more than just your character beating up the bad guy. Even the dumbest action movies don't just make the story about going to the place and just beating up the guy. I just watched probably the dumbest action movie ever, Meg 2 The Trench, and it wasn't just about Jason Statham fighting giant sharks. And honestly, there was a lot more to the story. It was about him dealing with the death of his wife and learning to let go of his daughter, who is grown now and ready to make her own decision. Even if those decisions are fighting giant octopuses with homemade explosives just to save a small dog. These were things that stood in his path that he had to overcome to be successful. What sort of things are your characters dealing with? What obstacles stand in their way? What keeps your character awake at night? What is their worst fear? What is the one thing they can't lose? What is the one thing they desperately want? A lot of times we don't like to think about these things because our characters are an escape. And having a character with shortcomings, it feels like that could ruin the escapism. But I find that when our character is more developed, it actually is more engaging to play. I'll tell you a story of one of the play sessions I had this weekend. In my first game I played, I played a character I call Zombie Girl. And Zombie Girl is a contentious character at uh, plenty of Pathfinder Society tables. She can be very frustrating as the only stats that are maximized on her are Constitution and Armor class. She is a meat shield and that is all. Very rarely can she contribute to anything happening outside of combat and it was my intention to make a character that was unable to speak and also appeared in such a way that normal folk would be terrified of her. Both of these things mirroring issues I have personally. I have a problem communicating and if you don't believe me, this audio file has already been edited about 30 times. A lot of redos, retakes. So making a character that can't speak is my way of dealing with that issue. And also like a lot of us, we can be self-conscious about our appearance. And that's another thing that I added to Zombie Girl, this self-consciousness that I think most people feel. Adding traits that are personal to me help the character be more personal. Basically, I had placed limitations on her and then waited for the opportunity for her to overcome those limitations. And during this game, the first game this weekend, Something very special happened because of that. A little bit of background information about the Pathfinder Society. It's an organization of adventurers. One of the biggest patrons is the Black Rose family. And they were having a wedding. A wedding with lots of important people in attendance. And my group was being sent to the wedding to make diplomatic connections with a number of powerful elites. Now, this is a perfect job for a seven foot tall zombie blood ranger who can't talk and has a scythe for a hand. Well, immediately our game master was having to improvise how a wedding planner for a wealthy family would deal with such a creature attending the social event of the year. 
During the reception, the party had to influence a number of different characters, and we had three rounds to try to garnish enough goodwill with these folks to broker a relationship for future business deal. Immediately, the kobold in our group was able to break the ice with the museum collector using a knowledge of history. Our summoner, who was actually married into the Black Rose family as a mechanic in Pathfinder Society, was able to talk directly with the matriarch of the family and with a diplomacy check, easily negotiated some goodwill. Our cavalier was able to talk trade routes with a noble merchant. And then it came to Zombie Girl. You could almost feel the energy at the table diminish. This was going to be our party's first failure. Zombie Girl looks across the party. She sees the other party members dressed in fine clothing while she wears rusted full plate. They're all engaged in talk with various different people of interest. She's so out of place here. Who can she influence? Then she sees him. Damien Kastner. She knows he's a former Hell Knight and he's also the groom-to-be. This is his wedding. He's wearing incredibly ornate ceremonial armor with gems and gold plating, and he is surrounded by other Hell Knights. This has to be the most intimidating group of people at the party. Zombie Girl walks right up to Damien. This group of Hell Knights is used to fighting demons, so Zombie Girl's appearance isn't quite shocking to them. Everyone at my table is holding their breath at this point. Zombie Girl walks right up and starts poking at Damien's armor. She regards it skeptically. She gives it a flick. Ding! Sounds like a tin can. She turns to the Hell Knights and starts laughing. Time for a diplomacy check. 18. And the one skill Zombie Girl has is diplomacy, a plus seven. 25 would be a double success. And Damien is looking kind of pissed right now. Who is this person? Why are they making fun of my armor? But then he realizes all the Hell Knights are laughing. Look at Damien, all hoity-toity in his fancy armor, one says. You look like a right pompous duke, Damien, another one says. Damien, looking down at his ceremonial armor, realizes that, yeah, <laughs> this is a pretty ridiculous set of armor. And he starts laughing with them. Zombie Girl spends the rest of the party drinking with Damien and the Hell Knights. They tell her all the stories of the past battles, and she is accepted into the group. During the party, a visiting prince, Al Hakim, starts a uh, dance fight. And folks are impressed by his dervish dancing. He was beating all challengers handedly. Zombie girl gets a tap on her shoulder. And she turns to see Jean Rangwu, who was one of the party's targets to influence. Hold out his hand in an offering of a dance. Zombie girl is self-conscious. Drinking with soldiers is one thing. Dancing in front of a bunch of people is quite a different thing. But one thing that Zombie Girl knows is that this is her second chance at life. She was alive before and is alive now. So whenever an opportunity presents itself like this, she's going to take it. A role for performance. And I believe sometimes dice can be magic. They can fail at the right time and they can succeed at the right time. This role was a natural 20. Despite her size and her appearance, Zombie Girl is graceful. And with Jean's willingness to let Zombie Girl lead, he's flipped around and held above her head like something you would see in Cirque du Soleil. Prince Al Hakim realizes that he's no longer the one winning the dance fight and storms off the stage. All eyes are on the seven foot tall zombie in full plate armor dancing beautifully with a member of the high class. And for a few moments, between beating the prince and before the party was inevitably raided by a group of demons, 
This awkward, undead creature, often shunned by society, incapable of showing emotion, incapable of even talking, so often disregarded, treated as worthless. For these few moments, a zombie was the life of the party. No one cares or remembers that zombie girl beat the head in of a demon a few minutes later. But they did remember that she could dance. The whole rest of the con, people asked me if I was the guy that played the zombie girl. I would tell their friends, that's the character I was telling you about. There were hundreds of heroic feats being accomplished by characters at the convention. Dragons defeated, lich lords slain, great battles won. But how many of those characters overcame their own limitations? How many characters shattered expectations? I believe those are the things that make characters interesting. 